Give me two seconds. Uh, it's just said something. Yeah, she said I can see Charlotte and Jordan. Yeah. With a sad laugh and back and forth.
See you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And Good evening, everybody. Evening, it's lovely to see you all here. Thank you for being here. And a special word of welcome to the many people watching around the world online. I see Dublin, South Africa, and uh, Australia. Sorry, I, I could get lost in that now, seeing where people are, but uh, there's people watching from all around the world, so it's lovely to have you uh, with us. Very special word of welcome to the, the songbirds who are behind me for their beautiful singing, who will be uh, singing for us tonight. Thanks to, to them for being here, you terrific girls. Special word of welcome to uh, Father William as well. Uh, Father William is a priest who teaches in the seminary in Allen Hall. Uh, and he's originally from Sunderland, and staying uh, in the northeast over Christmas, so it's lovely to have you with us. Nice to have you, John, as well, I suppose. <laughs> so welcome, everybody, and as we come to celebrate God amongst us, Christ's child being born in Bethlehem. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries together this evening, to make our hearts ready for the baby Jesus. Let us acknowledge our weakness and our sinfulness at times, but let us, as always, acknowledge that we have a loving and merciful God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Together, let us give glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year as we wait in hope for our redemption, grant that, just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our Judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Be seated for our readings, please. First reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. On those who live in the land of deep shadow, a light has shone. You have made their gladness greater. You have made their joy increase. They rejoice in your presence, as men rejoice at harvest time, as men are happy when they are dividing the spoils. For the yoke that was weighing on him the bar across his shoulders, the rod of his oppressor, these you break on the day of Midian. For all the footgear of battle, every cloak rolled in blood is burnt and consumed by fire. For there is a child born for us, a son given to us, and dominion is laid on his shoulders. And this is his name, given to him, Wonder Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, 
Prince of Peace. Wide is his dominion, in peace that has no end. For the throne of David, and for his royal power, which he establishes and makes secure in justice and integrity. From this time onwards and forever, the jealous love of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. The response is, Today the Saviour is born to us. He is Christ the Lord. Today the Saviour is born to us. He is Christ the Lord. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. O oh, sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Proclaim his help day by day. Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples. Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. Let the sea and all within it thunder praise. Let the land and all it bears rejoice. All the trees of the wood shout for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he comes, he comes to rule the earth. With justice he will rule the world, he will judge the peoples with his truth. Our spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census of the whole world to be taken. This census, the first, took place while Cornelius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph set out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee, and travelled up to Judea, to the town of David, called Bethlehem, since he was of David's house and life in order to be registered together with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In the countryside, close by, there were shepherds who lived in the fields and took it in turns to watch their flocks during the night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them. They were terrified, but the angel said, Do not be afraid. Listen, I bring you news of great joy 
a joy to be shared by the whole people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And here is a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, with the angel, there was a great throng of the heavenly host, praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to people who enjoy his favour. The Gospel of the Lord. There's an old Irish custom at Christmas time to put a candle in the window. It's a sign from the family that live in the house that Mary and Joseph are welcome there, that they have room for the Holy Family in their house. Also in Ireland in the time of religious persecution, this Christmas custom of a candle in the window was used by families as a sign that priest imprisoned or killed at the time, would be welcomed into their home too, that they could find safety and refuge from the authorities in their house so that the faith could be kept alive and Mass could be celebrated like what we're doing tonight. This is the night that we say loud and proud that we give a joyful and warm welcome to our God. It is a time that we throw away the no vacancy sign and allow the Lord into our homes, into our lives, and into our hearts. This year has been very different. This December I've really missed being able to go into the schools frequently to watch the children prepare for their nativity plays. Our schools parishes of Mary Magdalene's and St. Michael's have both done a fantastic job in difficult circumstances. But as I watched St. Mary Magdalene's DVD, I remembered the nativity, school nativity from about 10 years ago when I was in Newcastle. And the children were preparing for their play. And there was a lad called Jack who had Down syndrome actually. But Jack was really looking forward to the nativity because he had a starring role. He was the innkeeper. And his line was, there are no vacancies. And when Mary and Joseph, the two children that were play, playing Mary and Joseph came forward, they were to knock and Jack was to say, there are no vacancies. And the children playing Mary and Joseph were told to go away, looking very sad. Jack practiced his line and practiced his line, but very, very excited. And on the day of the school nativity in the cathedral, it arrived, this big moment. And the children playing Mary and Joseph came forward. any room. And Jack said, there are no rooms available. He nailed it. He got it right and he looked so proud. And the children playing Mary and Joseph walked away and really overacted. They looked devastated. They looked very sad. And as they walked away, Jack didn't enjoy nailing his line he became overcome with emotion because Mary and Joseph looked so sad. And out of nowhere he blurted it out, but you guys can stay at my house if you want. <laughs> and there wasn't a dry eye left in the cathedral. Tonight we ask ourselves in all honesty if Mary and Joseph knocked on our door, would we have room for them? And are we like Jack, filled with a generosity of spirit for those who are in need? The Christmas story also calls us to examine our attitude to the stranger, to the foreigner, 
to the asylum seeker for what we may or may not think about them takes on a new dimension on this holy night. Tonight may also call us to ask, do we have time for God under our roof? In the midst of having a lot more time at home, have we spent any of that time in prayer? Or have we been binge watching on Netflix? Have we used lockdown this year, this awful time, to spend time with God? Or have we watched the Tiger King rather than the King of the Universe? Have we spent time praying with Mary and Joseph and the Holy Family in our homes? We are reminded that no matter what, God keeps knocking on our doors, the doors of our hearts, and like a child, we are called to invite him in. The focus of our story tonight is Bethlehem. I've been there twice, and I love it. It's a very special place. One of the many things that impressed me about the town was that there's a big silver star right on the ground that is believed to be the birthplace of Jesus. And on the wall nearby is a sign written in many languages that said, the star of Bethlehem which has been in the sky was now on earth. A reminder to pilgrims that our God has become one of us, out of the heavens, out of love for us, the word was made flesh. In doing so then, Christ gives meaning to our lives gives hope to our lives. He shows us how to be fully human, and in doing so, he achieves for us the divine life for which we are all created for. I remember watching an interview not too long ago on the television with the director Steven Spielberg, and the interviewer asked him a strange question. He asked, what do you hope God will say to you when you finally meet him? And Spielberg thought for a while, and then with a smile he answered, I hope God will say to me, thank you for listening. And I thought, that's a great answer. Think of the Christmas story. Everybody has heard it, but how many people are really listening to it? How many of us are really listening to it and taking it into our hearts tonight? Herod, the powerful king, heard the Christmas story. He was stressed out by it. He was threatened by it. It brought up negative emotions and clouded his heart because of jealousy and because of fear of losing what he had, not thinking about what he could gain from the Christmas story. He heard it, but he wasn't listening to it. The hard-working, low-paid shepherds in the fields heard the Christmas story and they listen to it. They were moved to go and worship the Christ child, like you and I have been by coming here tonight, or by tuning in at home. And the shepherds worshipped. But more than that, because they truly listened, because they listened to the story in their hearts, they were moved to share the story. They told people about Jesus, and as a result, they became messengers of joy. I heard a story once about a farmer who had a farm in Cumbria with his wife and son. And when his son was about 14, he told them that from now on, if he was going to be given his pocket money, that he'd have to help out around the farm. So he did. And some jobs he liked, and some jobs he hated. The important thing was his dad loved spending the time with him and he was proud of him when he seen his son working hard. He felt he was bonding a lot more with him. But the boy hated getting up. His worst job was milking the cows in the morning which had to be done at 6 a.m. every single day with his dad. It was his worst job. Sometimes he just couldn't be bothered to get out of his bed which hurt his dad. Sometimes he even thought, I'd do without me pocket money if I could just stay in bed an extra half hour. It was one Christmas Eve, he was talking to his mum, 
And his mom told him how much it meant to his dad that the son was helping out on the farm and making life better for him. The son listened to his mother and took it to heart. He realized how much his dad loved him, wanted the best for him, and treasured time with him. The next morning, Christmas morning, the boy decided to get up a lot earlier. He got up at 4 a.m. and he milked the cows all by himself, so it meant less work for his dad. And when his dad got up, he was overcome and filled with gratitude. On that Christmas morning, the boy, for the first time in his life, had made his gift of himself to his father. And it brought him joy, as well as his father joy. You see, love awakens love. And this holy night, if we really listen, then we can hear and see love awaking love. That's what Christmas all about. That is what our crib scene is all about. Love awaking more love. And hopefully we will see it all around us. This year is very different. Christmas is smaller, hopefully without a lot less pressure that we put on ourselves, a lot less presence. But Christmas this year is tinged with a little bit sadness because we cannot see and spend time with the people we love. We can't hug and kiss and sing and dance. But this is all because of love. Because we care. Because we hope to do all those things again with our family and friends in the future when this awful virus is finally defeated next year. And it will be. It is this Christmas, out of love for one another, especially for the most vulnerable and the older members of our families and communities, the most vulnerable, that we scale back our celebration. And in a sense, then, our social distancing is another sign of the power of the Christmas spirit, because love awakens love. As Christians, as Catholics, that's what we are reminded is our vocation tonight to awaken love, to be messengers of that love and joy in the world, even when we feel up against it, even when we don't feel that there's a great deal to be joyful about. You and I are called to keep hope, faith, joy and love alive in our homes, in our families and in our communities. And this shouldn't just last tomorrow or over the Christmas season. God became a human being because he loves you, all of us, so very much. And he wants to be at work in each one of our hearts. We are all called to be messengers of this joy and share that love with one another. A love that doesn't matter how much or how little money we have. A love that doesn't depend on what we look like, or where we come from, or what we've done. But simply a love that awakens more love. A love that respects the dignity of all human life, from conception until natural death. A love that sees other people not just better or worse than ourselves, but as equals. A love that is open to forgiveness. A love that does not hold grudges or bitterness. A love that does not end with death, but unites us all with those whom we have treasured and died that are now with that loving God who will hopefully say to each one of us one day, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to the Christmas story, a story of pure love for all peoples. Thank you for listening, and thank you for living it. That is our hope. Let us be people that live this story.
that lived this crib scene tonight. A boy, a child, born in poverty in an insignificant part of the world. No money, no qualifications. Seems unimportant to everybody that mattered. And yet he came with that message and power of love. Let us be messengers of that joy, that love for all. Let us stand and profess what we believe, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty. So, Venator Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. On this holy night, gathered together in prayer, let's just have a moment of quiet. Let's think of the people we'll perhaps not be seeing tomorrow that we would love to see. Let's think of the people that love us and support us and care for us and the people that we love in return. Let's just ask the Lord to bless all those people. Bless all our relationships and friendships and keep us always close to them. But let's pray on this holy night especially for those who are suffering tonight. Those who feel alone or isolated. They become part of our community now as we remember them in prayer. And let's pray especially for all our frontline staff in the NHS, care homes and nursing homes, all our key workers that have given so much of themselves in this difficult year. Ask the Lord to bless them and keep them safe for all those who are sick or suffering. We bring all our prayers before the Lord. Let's remember our loved ones who have died on this holy night. Those gone before us mark with a sign of faith. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. And we ask for the prayers and powerful intercession of our Blessed Mother as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord our God, on this holy night, we ask that you hear and receive all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be seated for the preparation of the gifts. Thank you. 
my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we look forward, O oh Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly, for knowing that in them you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim together. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. It comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, 
gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant them peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace with a smile or a nod or a COVID-secure peace sign. Peace with you. Peace, peace. peace with you. Peace with you. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away all the sins of the world. Blessed are those that are called to the Supper of the Lamb. And may the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life.
a moment of silence. Let's just give thanks to the Christ child. Give thanks to Jesus for the gift of himself in this holy sacrament. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we, re we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to sit down very briefly, please. I want to thank you all for being here tonight. Very different year. you will having to book in for masses and awful weather outside, which you've made the effort to be here. Uh, and it's wonderful to see uh, you here to celebrate Christmas, how it's supposed to be. And the hundreds of people watching online there, it always fascinates me. It shows how uh, we are one church, uh, with someone from the British Virgin Islands, Ireland, Dubai, France, Spain, all over the world tuning in, praying with and for us tonight. So thanks for watching and then a lot more people will watch later on as well and on YouTube. Before we go, um, any children want to come now? John, if you want to go uh, and give out, there's bags of sweets there for children. It's my own expense. That's how generous your new parish priest is. So I don't want to come near you because I don't want to catch COVID, but if any children want to come forward and uh, take them from John there, you'll be very welcome. Come forward, don't be shy. Oh yeah, he's going to you. That one's got a snotty nose, stay away. <laughs> You know, children, Santa brings extra presents to those children that come to Mass. Isn't that right? <laughs> you should see what the Easter Bunny does for those children that come to Mass. <laughs> so there's a little treat. Thank you all. Uh, a lot of hard work goes into uh, the church all year round. We have people stewarding, uh, people that manage our hall. Uh, people that check. It's a big operation opening up a church and we couldn't do it without an army of volunteers. So thank you very much to all those people that help uh, do the flowers. Hang on now, I'm not finished yet, Kevin. Yes, thank you, Kevin. You've ruined it. Also, the people, <laughs> lovely, beautiful flowers. I did have a little bit help uh, doing the flowers this year uh, and they look beautiful so thank you sacristans that come in set up tidy up clean the church our volunteers our workers that clean the church piety stall so much so thank you all you can give them a clap now <laughs> and all the service and general dog's body thank you Jen. And we have to say a very, very big thank you tonight uh, to the beautiful musicians, the songbirds. Can we give them a round of applause? Stand up and take a bow. Stand up and take a bow. Stand up and take a bow. So I manage these girls, so if you want to book them, then get in touch and uh, we'll discuss prices. But thank you for helping our, our liturgy. I think that's it. Shall we uh, stand for our final blessing? Thanks Father William as well for being with us tonight. Uh, you can't see his face but his <laughs> eyes, he's happy to be with us anyway. Yeah, I am smiling. <laughs> he is smiling. He's not a miserable bugger. <laughs>
So I wish you all a very happy Christmas. Have a lovely day tomorrow. I know it's scaled back, it's very different. Uh, but as I said before, it's because we love the people uh, that we'll miss tomorrow. We'll see them next year when we, when we do defeat uh, coronavirus. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass has ended. Let's go in the peace and joy of Christ. Thanks, everyone. Happy Christmas.